Hi guys, beloved greetings from the Andalusia mountains again. Today um, I have something quite uh, urgent and serious to talk about and that is the growing hatred of police. Um, there recently, over the weekend, was a violent clash between demonstrators and police in Melbourne, Victoria. And I'm seeing this video being shared around like uh, wildfire. Tens of thousands of views of these live feeds. Uh, there are people that are beating up police and police that are, are pepper spraying activists. And it's absolute chaos what, what I'm seeing. Some people are using this footage as a, as a kind of romanticized idea of finally, you know, the revolution is coming. We are rising up and feel very empowered when they see this footage. They think this is a sign that we are going somewhere positive. When I see this footage, I don't see a breakthrough. I see a breakdown. Breakdown of strategy, a breakdown of patience, breakdown of unity, and it's not going anywhere positive at all. There's a very definite agenda by the media that is fueling this hatred towards the police. We have to understand that police is not our enemy. Oh, how easy it is to direct all of our frustration and anger towards them because they are being played as pawns of tyranny in this time. And I'm not saying that what they're doing is right by any means. In fact, it's wrong. They're breaking down our constitutions. They are following orders just for a paycheck. They are actively helping to destroy our fundamental liberties and basic human rights. And there's absolutely no excuse for that. However, there are people who are being pushed to do far worse things than the police right now. And why is it that people forget about that? Why is it that we only direct our hatred towards the police because the media has planned it this way? The powers that shouldn't be has planned it this way. What do you think happens when more and more activists get violent on the streets and start beating up the police? Do you really think we have the force to overthrow a tyranny by ourselves? No way. They have all the weapons imaginable in this world. And if we keep going down this path of responding to violence with force, they're only going to be bringing more troops on the streets. We're going to be seeing more militarization of our societies. I don't want to see blood on the streets. Have you noticed how in the media they started feeling this, this agenda of domestic terrorism, trying to paint us freedom activists into terrorists? Is that what we want? I don't want that. So we have to be very, very careful not to allow this media-fueled agenda to, to, you know, infiltrate our consciousness and make us lose sight of the bigger picture of what is actually going on. Have you thought about the nurses and the doctors, what they are doing? They are following orders just the same. Uh, but they are doing something far worse than the police. They are injecting people with genetically modifying substances, actively maiming, sterilizing, and killing men, women, and children. How come you don't see activists storming the hospitals and be beating up the nurses and the doctors? Because we know that that is not the response. That's not the solution. What is the solution? What is the best weapon that we can yield? The sword of truth. We have to inform our police, our nurses, our doctors, our teachers. They are all equally culpable. They are all equally complicit in this crime against humanity. Police is not the only one who is now actively betraying us. Don't lose sight of that. The hospitals are turning into gulags. Death camps. So what do we need to do? We need to inform them. 
We need to help the police, the teachers, the nurses, the doctors, the lawyers to understand that what is happening now has absolutely nothing to do with any kind of sanitary regulations, but it's a, it is a permanent installation of an all new culture, totalitarianism, absolute social control, medical fascism. There's many names for it, but it's tyranny. At the heart of it, it's just tyranny. And we can't overthrow a tyranny with force. They have crowd control technology that we cannot even imagine. You know, if we keep going down that road of, of storming in through, through the you know, police walls and demonstrations, we are going to only see further traumatization of the people and the police, further division, further PTSD, further trauma-based actions, and further breaking down of our communities. I talk to police on a regular basis. As most of you know, I'm coordinating Police of Freedom, which is an international movement of police who do recognize that what is happening is wrong, who are actively doing outreach to their colleagues, who are gathering police to start speaking up, to inform them that this is a fourth industrial revolution and that there's been an enormous transfer of wealth. 61% of the world's wealth has been moved to the highest uh, earning class of our world. 61% growth. Okay, this is nothing to do with COVID whatsoever. This is, this is the first step of installing a permanent new system globally. So pay attention when you start having those thoughts that police is the enemy and we have to somehow teach them a lesson and, and, and kick their butts on the street. Who implanted that thought into your mind? Is it the media? Is it all those Hollywood movies of the revolution? Because you know, that is the definition of controlled opposition is wanting revolution, wanting the same system to revolve again. You can't win violence with violence. You have to use wits, wisdom, strategy. You have to learn. We have to learn from the past. We can't allow our emotions, our frustration to take over us so that we start acting in, in, in this way. It's devastating what is happening, especially in Australia and in South Africa and in, and in other countries also. It is absolutely devastating and we have all the right to feel infuriated and rage. But that energy is being directed to the wrong cause if it's used to attack police on the streets. At the end of the day, they are a part of our community. Their children go to the same schools as ours. What we have to do is allow them to see that the system that they are helping to install permanently into our society is going to ultimately affect them and their children also. So in Police of Freedom, we want to help protect our local police so that they can keep their jobs and that we can have still some kind of connection that we still have some sort of ability to communicate and liaise with them. Because what will happen if that's taken away, if, if it's going in this radicalized way, if we are being treated more and more like terrorists, there's no longer going to be local police who we're going to be up against. It's going to be military. It's going to be blue helmets or some sort of other global militarized troops. It's the last thing we want. And if we look, you know, a couple of years ahead, it could be that there will no longer even be a human being inside that costume. You know, we're already seeing police having to gear up more and more, starting to dress up like Terminators, black helmets where you can't see their eyes, all this padding everywhere, just to be there with a the, with the peaceful um, activists, it's an absolutely disproportionate 
responds. So who knows? If you know five or ten years from now, it's going to be actually an AI controlled machine. We have to understand we have to help the police to understand that this could be happening, and at that point they will lose their paychecks. Which is the reason why they are now refusing to see reality for what it is and keep on following their orders. Immoral, unlawful orders. That's the society that is being installed now. This AI-controlled surveillance technocracy. We have to help the police to understand that their pension funds are being drained. They will not be having a pension soon. We already know how the healthcare workers are being coerced to get the same, you know, potentially lethal injection. The solution is not violence. Solution is knowledge. Knowledge is power. And we have the knowledge. So we have to be very careful in our actions and know that we are channeling our energy, that fury, that righteous indig indignation to the right cause. We can do this non-violently. And don't think non-violence at any point means pacifism. Non-violence is just the non-aggression principle, meaning that you do not initiate aggression. But you can, of course, use force to defend yourself. That is your sacred right, according to natural law. You can use force. If somebody's coming for you or for your family, you can defend yourself, absolutely. But what is the point of organizing got cut off there. What is the point of organizing demonstrations when you know it's going to be a wall of police dressed up like terminators up against you? What can you possibly achieve there than violence? Okay, why don't we share the videos of all these absolutely successful, phenomenal events that we've had around the world where police have actually marched together with the people? They're happening also. How come this is not getting any traction? Because the idea of unity and, and community and com camaraderie with the police is not beneficial to driving this, this division in between us. But I tell you, it is happening. We have already thousands of police on board in Police for Freedom. And it's growing. Every week I'm getting contacts from new countries. There are so many police who are willing to take a stand now. We just have to be patient. We have to be, well, we have to be willing to welcome them on our side and let go of any prejudice right now. Just because they wear the uniform doesn't mean that there isn't potentially an amazing human being inside who has just been brainwashed. Just like the nurses and the doctors and the teachers. They've all been brainwashed. Who's causing more death? The Western medical system. They are the leading cause of death in this world. How come we don't have that hatred towards them? Because the media is, is building our perception in a way where the hatred is only going towards the police, when it's the entire system that is rotten at its very core. So let's use our knowledge to inspire the teachers, the doctors, the nurses, the lawyers, the police to stand up and speak up and end this insane race towards absolute control over humanity and nature before it's too late. So watch yourself. You know, when you see those images of violence between protesters and the police, know that that is the wrong way. That will only justify further tyrannical measures against us, further violent oppression and the military on the streets. That is not the path to liberation. Okay. But I also want to say I, I'm so grateful for all of you who see what is happening. I know our freedom movement is growing. It's now just a question of what do we do with this information? And where do we steer our energy? What is the solution? So I invite everyone to study nonviolent liberation strategies from the past. Gandhian method, you know, Martin Luther King, people who've been here before us and who've managed to achieve nonviolent evolutionary movements. That's what we want. We don't want the same system anymore. We need to learn natural law, self-responsibility, you know, sovereignty, 
How do we live on this earth as, as living free men and women? How do we reclaim our sacred rights? So we have to lead by example and show that we are taking this very, very seriously and not give media any ingredients to create shit stories about us, about how we are some kind of domestic terrorists. Let's make it so difficult for them that they will not be able to invert what is happening. Let's keep making our marches pure, with knowledge and good strategy, like we've managed to do in many countries with police of freedom. In the Netherlands, the last big, big march they, um, they organized in Rotterdam was 15,000 people. Absolutely peaceful. Not a single march organized by Police for Freedom has had a single arrest. No pepper sprays, no violence. It's all to do with building relationships with your local, local police, creating trust and helping to inspire the humanity in them. Helping them to see the reason why we are so adamant about standing up for our rights. Help them remember what ethical policing is all about. Help restore their dignity. Okay? We need them on our side. We cannot demonize them and vilify them. Yes, they are doing horrible things, but so are the doctors and the nurses. Let's not forget that. Okay? Sending you all lots and lots of love, strength, courage, and patience. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon, guys. Bye.